Okay, so we get to sit down today with Romero. You guys know that this is one of the top moments ever for any beauty junkie because you are one of the masters of makeup and I want to ask you everything in life. You can basically. ask me everything that you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ask you everything in life, but I would like to start with what is your definition of beauty? Okay. I feel like it really comes from within. When you see someone that has confidence, that, that in itself mm -hmm. is beauty. So I feel like it really comes from someone's spirit or energy as opposed to just surface. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's nice and deep. I like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And okay, going a little bit like talking about modern times, that now we know there's like this whole other industry of like makeup artists that happen on social media. Right. You know, um, that seems so different to what's happening backstage and in editorials mm -hmm. and in the fashion world. You know, you have like complete different ways of doing makeup. Do you right. think someone that started on social media could actually become like a makeup artist of a different sort? Why not? I feel like a social media makeup artist, someone that's uh, Instagram based, let's say, mm -hmm. it still is an art, you yes. know? It's just a different type of makeup, you know? The difference could be me being someone that's backstage all the time. Yes. There is always never enough time to complete a makeup. But the makeup needs to look like an editorial because the cameras and the lenses are very, very close. So you need to be quick and it needs to be fast. And I don't really know on social media how long someone is taking to do that beautiful lip that I see or that beautiful eye, whether it's filtered or not. The thing in my reality backstage at Fashion Week is that there is no filter. They no. take a picture and now it goes directly to the magazine. You guys are seeing backstage in many cases live. So this means that you have to try to be as perfect as possible without the use of a filter backstage. So yes, everyone can do the, the, can be a makeup artist and it is achievable, but there's a difference. There's a difference in the style of makeup and the type of makeup depending on what type of makeup artist you are. So you're talking about backstage, you're always there, you're creating trends. People are following the things that you're coming up with. So where does that inspiration even come from for you? Well, when you're backstage and you're creating the look for a show, you really get the inspiration from the designer. It's very rare, it happens, mm -hmm. but it's very rare that a designer will say, do whatever, do whatever you really want. want. When they tell me that, I am like, okay, let's go. You ready for this? <laughs> you're warned, I told you, you. You told me, right? I can do whatever. But the main thing is, I want to really highlight the clothing. And that's why you're really there. That's why you're backstage. That's why you're with the designer. Is they want you to be in sync with what their their concept, their, their concept is for the season. Exactly. So um, many times you get the inspiration from the designer, and they'll say it could be anything from I was on vacation and I saw a seashell. Oh, my grandma made these amazing pancakes. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> you know? Grandma's, grandma's pancakes <laughs> could be a trend. You never know. You never so, know. So yeah, yeah. I mean, you really do want to highlight clothing is what you're doing, and then it should all come together. But it's not just hair. It's makeup. It's also nails, and it's like casting for models, all of it. So you're looking at this 360 picture and your part is a small part of it, but an important part also. Very important. I feel like it's one of those things that sometimes gets underestimated. It's like, oh yeah, it's the makeup. Hey, you can mess things up if you mess up the makeup. <laughs> you can, and, and it, it could be as important as choosing the right shade of lipstick, of eyeshadow to complement, and it doesn't mean that it needs to match what's happening in the collection, okay. but it needs to somehow work. work. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's not as simple as it looks. It's not. And you know what? Like when I've seen some of your work that's like, like super creative, I wonder, and not only in your own process, but in a lot of people's, okay, when you know that maybe it's time to stop, because there's like a thin line between classy and costumey right. or hot couture and you went too far. Right. So where do you draw that line? Well, this is when everyone will say like editing can be your friend. Okay. You know, um, you really have to think like how far can you push something uh, before it becomes costumey or are you now overpowering the hair and okay. the clothes because okay. the makeup is too strong. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes it could be like I'm doing tribal makeup and she's in glamorous evening wear. <laughs> that could work okay. if, if this is what in you're going In the right for. context. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, who's to say that it's too much? Who's to say that it's too little? This is an art. So I feel like, you know, as artists now, especially in makeup now and with trends and what's happening, it's about having creative license. It's about having creative freedom. 
you know, to do what you want. So it's about really having creative license and, and being creative with makeup. So it's okay to push it. It's okay to be different, you know? Yay! <laughs> the, main, the main thing is that you have the confidence, that you feel confident that this works and that everybody's happy. Good. And let's talk about your family, mm -hmm. your Mac family, mm -hmm. because we know that this is like the makeup empire, you know, and you're lucky enough to work there and they're lucky enough to have you. And um, we know that they're always like really pushing the envelope and going far. What's your favorite part about working with them? My favorite part of working with Mac really is the feeling of exactly what you just said, family, the feeling of community and also products. We all are willing to share, which is also really important. And sharing meaning that we all learn from sharing and okay. grow from that. And Mac has a superior product, which I stand behind because many times we're backstage helping to create those products. Mm -hmm. So that really helps. But the most important thing is a feeling of community. What Mac does for the artistry community outside of the brand as well as internally. And so they support your creativity. Exactly. That they support our creativity, you know, as artists with the brand, but also with the artist community outside of Mac. So we feel that we're a part of this bigger family, even though we're a family at Mac. And that's honestly what's kept me at Mac for so many years. So Let's talk about products. We have yes. here some of your favorite products yes. um, for this season that's yes. coming up. Apparently we're doing pink That's right. this season. That's right. Pink um, and coral is, is really big. But what's amazing about this formula, the Versacolor, is that it's this beautiful stain and gloss all in one. Even when the, the gloss part of it has dissipated, the stain is still cool. there. And I love how juicy the colors look. It just like looks it. so delicious. Of course, you can use a bright pencil underneath it. This one is shock value. So I can see we have a bronzing yes. powder and we also have the mineralized skin finish. That's right, that's right. And what's great about these pinwheels is that you have all these different colors, so you can actually do a blush with the one that's uh, more pinky or peachy. Uh -huh. You can do a highlight with this, so it's quite convenient. You could swirl it and, and just it all. apply, or you can use it individually and use where you need it. And because it's summer, what's really important is mascara. Okay. So we have In Extreme Dimension Mascara, which is waterproof, and what's great is it comes with this really chubby brush. Oh, I like those. And it really separates the lashes as you apply so, and the formula is super, super black. We had a little moment before we started this yes. interview. Are we shining too much? <laughs> because yeah. it's good to shine, but it's not good to shine, if you know what I mean. This is a great tip from you, so let's talk about that. I'm calling Prep and Prime Skin Refined Zone my liquid powder. So it's amazing. It's great if you already have makeup on that you can use it to mattify the face without using powder. But if you're like me who just came out with a freshly washed face, but it's a little shiny for camera, then you can actually just use a little bit of this where it just mattifies without any color, any coverage, and it's invisible. So Prep and Prime Skin Refined Zone is my key product I'm that sold. I'll say everyone needs for summer and for hot weather. And this color Taylor Gray is a really hot one for the season because it's about these, if you're wearing these brighter colors on lips, you're wearing these colder, grayer tones on eyes. Oh, we're not going all bright then. No, no. Okay. I mean, you can do bright, but you have to you have to choose your balance. Okay. Yes. So it means if the lip <laughs> is quite bold and you're having some highlight happen, that you're just having the the shadow itself be more neutral, be more even, be more easy. Okay. So we're doing something like Taylor Gray. But I want to tell you what's important about paint pots. What's amazing is that it dries down quite quickly. It does not crease. So if you have a problem with creasing on your eyes, this is important and it also will help your liner to stay in place. And they come in many, many so colors, many. including shimmer. So okay, I'm just so saying. that color is fabulous, and yes. it's one of your top picks. That's right. But there's also bright blue, Yes. that I don't know who would ever buy the bright who blue, but there's... Who do you think <laughs> would buy the bright blue or the sparkle? What is the biggest mistake that women are, we are doing with our makeup? What is kind of the, you know, that you run into women, because you see them all the time, mm -hmm. And you're like, gosh, they're just not getting the eyebrow, or oh, they're creasing on the top, or what okay. do you think is happening to us? So my, my biggest thing that I would see that I could say that people need to be careful of is really just um, not choosing your battles, meaning that you're putting, <laughs> you're putting everything on at once. Okay. It's a strong eye and a strong lip. Right now, the huge trend is really just focusing. As I was saying before, okay. if you're doing a stronger lip, then the eye is going to be more neutral. Right. So just focusing on one thing I think is the key. 
and something if you want to be on trend for spring and summer 2016. Now I know that I will not shine. Where's my pride? I won't shine and I will choose my battles and not do this, <laughs> which right. I've done forever right. my whole life because I'm a Latina and that's how we roll. <laughs> but the, the main thing is that what's really good and what I love about your look is that it's just you now, like you're confident this way because this is your look. So I feel like as long as you have the confidence, you, you wear it, it well, you can pull it off. Okay, for good. sure. I like that. That is our closing message. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank for you. This interview. I hope you guys all learned a bunch of stuff. I'm going to quiz you later. You write that stuff down. <laughs> Thank you.